So, let's talk grenade launchers. Grenade launchers are a type of special weapon available in Payday 2. The key drawbacks of a grenade launcher is their low overall ammo and fire rate, but they do a crazy amount of damage and can take out large crowds, which makes them greatly effective crowd control weapons when paired with something more well-rounded. You don't need any skill investment to make them work well, but you will need Payday 2 Ultimate Edition or to have bought a launcher ready DLC in the past to make these builds, until they add a free one, but that's really the only caveats. Let's go check them out. So this first build will be utilizing a sniper rifle in conjunction with a launcher. My core skills are aced uppers and inspire to help my team off the ground and keep myself and them alive. Aggressive reload basic to increase the rifle's reload speed a little bit and get me back in the fight quicker. Basic diehard bullseye and shock and awe, all pretty solid armor stuff to keep what bit of armor I will have up and running. Steady grip aced for that sweet sweet stability and accuracy. Aced shock proof to keep me taser free. They can do a lot of damage with a grenade launcher. All the silencer skills, the aced concealment skills, aced nine lives, and this little melee ditty for those quick reloads all across the board. My primary is the Desert Fox. It's been a while since we saw this thing and not much has changed. Suppressed barrel, concealment boost, compact laser module, and the speculator sight in this thing is good to go. It's a highly compact sniper rifle and if you have the John Wick weapon pack, you've got one of the game's best sniper rifles with you right now. You just need to do a little bit of finagling to make it work. My secondary is the Arbid- oh, Right, I said I wouldn't use that again in that last episode. Shoot. Okay, well, alright, let's bring the China Puff instead. Compared to the Arbiter, this thing is a bit slower and carries a few fewer grenades to a tube and many fewer grenades overall, but it packs nearly double the damage, meaning it one-hits crowds pretty much every time. For the sake of concealment, all I've done is remove the stock. It's still at 100 accuracy and stability, so there's no worry. My melee is the Ice Pick. I'm bringing incendiary grenades for my throwable, and I'm bringing first aid kits, the suit, and rogue. Three different rogue builds, joke. Three, 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 three different rogue builds. Three... Three, three different rogue builds. So, how does this build work? Exactly as you expect it to. Snipe distant enemies, take out crowds at the China Puff, melee an enemy occasionally, reload both guns, use uppers, take out snipers, dozers, complete objectives, and remember to have fun and be yourself. This is a safe space to shoot people in the head with a sniper rifle. Let's end this joke. Can, can we just can, can we cancel the... Can we cancel the job? Or join a group that doesn't bring any dock bags, so you end up forgoing your first aid kits for the sake of the group, and then someone joins the dock bags and you just feel, you feel like a twat. Now, for my second build, I will be spending the fewest points possible to get Combat Doctor Aced for dual dock bags. I've got the same tank setup as the previous build, but I've aced Die Hard and Shock and Awe, and got Iron Man Basic. I picked up Fire Control and Lock and Load Basic for some hip firing capabilities. I'm skipping over the concealment skills and the professional ace, and investing in Equilibrium, Gun Nut, and One Handed Talent Ace for pistol power, as well as Up You Go and Swan Song Ace to make dying trivial, and if and when I die. I also took Basic Running from Death. That's, that's, that's important. This is another one of those builds where I feel like I should start in reverse order. So my perk deck is Grinder, and I'm packing a light ballistic vest. 91 armor and plenty of health regen makes surviving tougher altercations that much easier. I'm bringing dock bags, molotovs, and I would go for the kunai and the grinder build, but instead I'm packing the katana. Any 450 charge damage melee will do in this build, I just like bringing the katana. My secondary is the broomstick, the big one, because this is more or less my main gun. Jungle Ninja's Oppressor, an Accuracy Boost, Combined Module, Extended Mag, Red Dot Sight, Precision Barrel, and the Holster Stock get this thing to 100 accuracy and stability in a sensible manner. This is, more or less, the Gallant Rifle. And that makes sense for that to be my secondary, when my primary is the Piglet. Yep, uh, we're, uh, we're doing this. The Piglet is, under most circumstances, one of the game's worst weapons for a handful of reasons. While when it came out, having six grenades at a time seemed incredibly overkill. <laughs> Nowadays, this isn't anything special. The Arbiter is almost more or less an assault rifle that fires 25mm grenades at its targets instead of bullets. When it launched, it was doing 340 damage per shot, just like the GL40, making it the second strongest gun in the game at the time. But nowadays, a gun doing 300 damage isn't some type of wild exception. Heck, our broomstick is rather close to that damage. And while it sits at 1300 damage a shot now, none of this is the reason why nobody runs it. It's the reload speed. By default, it takes 15 seconds to reload this thing from empty. With Payday 2's current meta, you want a gun that can get you back into the fight quickly for the sake of not having to stop firing for too long. But what the piglet decides is that what you need most is to take a break. Press R, go outside, watch the birds, and look at the autumn leaves fall. Decide you've had enough of staying inside all day playing video games. So you head downtown to open a bakery. You meet the love of your life. You start a family. And then you watch things go south. You file for divorce ten years later. You end up cold and bitter, heartbroken, and alone. You return to your hometown to, to depart from this mortal coil on your deathbed. 
and you still get to watch the last two grenades get loaded, which is just a bonus. This is why I took Bloodthirst Aced and basic running from death. If I go down, I melee an enemy, and then I reload, and I can get the piglet loaded reasonably? I'm running incendiary grenades, the short barrel, a military laser module or LED combo, speculator sight, and no stock. Even cut down, this thing hits 100 100, so I have no need to bulk it up for no reason. You could slap the contractor stock on it, or the two piece. Actually, the two piece looks pretty. Uh, you know what? That's enough. Enough digressions. So, with this build, my main focus is the broomstick. The Mauser Carbine is indeed a DMR with this build, and with Shock and Awe Aced, I can stun shields in one shot and kill them in two. Aim for the head, and when you start taking health damage, shoot an incendiary grenade out in the crowds or choke points and reap the rewards of health regen rapidly. And when it runs empty, just leave it alone until you get plenty of empty time to reload, then just whack an enemy, get to cover, and get skeletonized, waiting for the thing to reload. Wait, actually, that wasn't... that wasn't bad. Huh. I did it. I, I made the... I made the piglet not suck. And all it took was some shoddy grinder build. Amazing. Also, at uh, Swan Song Plus, the piglet is a... Uh, I'm sure you can put two and two together. So, there you are, two different grenade launcher builds. I've already talked about the little friend, and there's more builds on this channel using the Arbiter than Inspire. Don't actually do the math to confirm it on my claim, that'll be a sad affair either way. And the main takeaway here is as long as you got reload speed boosts and a competent sidearm for your handheld mortar, feel free to bring whatever works best for your build. I mean, a mayhem, so long as you're smart about it, you can get away with almost any build. You have plenty of options, so don't feel ashamed that you're not running the guns everyone else is. You can make the grinder build with the GL-480 or pack the Arbiter and the Sniper build. There's no wrong way to grenade launch. Except, you know, not having reload speed increases, I guess. Uh, well, anyways, I hope I inspired you to take a look at how and where you can run grenade launchers for a variety of situations. And until next time, see you around. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, I'd recommend subscribing. Patreon and social media links are in the description.